How the heck are you? Now, you know, you know, guys, you know me. And I don't get wound up about much. But on the Tony Evers excitement scale that goes from holy mackerel and, ma and maxes out at heck yes, I am jazzed as hell to be welcoming Welcoming our next Democratic nominee to Wisconsin Vice President Kamala Harris. Are you ready to hear from the next President of the United States of America? Yes. Me too. After listening to all the Republicans who dropped by here for a few days last week, it'll be nice, nice to finally hear someone who knows something about getting things done for the great state of Wisconsin. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris is ready to lead from day one. She's already proven herself to be a tenacious leader, district attorney, attorney general, and U.S. senator. And as our vice president, Kamala has vigor vigorously defended our democracy, fought hard very hard to protect our freedoms that we hold dear and work tirelessly to do the right thing and deliver for us. And that's why yesterday I joined my favorite Midwestern governors, Davy Pritzker, Gretchen Whitmer, and Tim Walls, to announce that I am all in on Kamala Harris. So the question is, the question I have for all of you here today is, are you all in Wisconsin? Yes! Yes! You're there because we've got a lot of work to do. We have 105 days, and we do not have a minute to waste. This is an all-hands-on-deck or a make-or-break-it moment for our democracy here in the great state of Wisconsin. Because here's the truth about two guys in this race, Donald Trump and J.B., excuse me, J.D. Vance, <laughs> are a dangerous threat to our, to our country and to our democracy. They're not running to help others, they're running to serve themselves. They're not capable of being honest or telling the truth. And Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have a radical, radical agenda, and they plan to pursue it if they get into the Oval Office. So if you haven't seen it, Google Project 2025. <laughs> it looks like you already have. Look it up when you get home and send it on to others. It's extraordinary, extraordinarily horrible. And we all know that they'll work hard to enact a national abortion ban. <laughs> Trump's Running mate, J.D. Vance, has said that loud and clear, and I'm serious. Look it, look it up, if you don't believe it. Vance said he'd like abortion to be, quote, illegal nationally. We're going to stop him. We call, he called the U.S. Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe historic and, quote, put a new era of society into motion. We have to stop that motion, folks. I'll tell that to Wisconsin women who spent a year experiencing what it's like to live in a state that bans nearly all abortions, even cases of rape or incest. <laughs> if that's the new society Donald and Vance want, they're going to have to sell it someplace else, because we don't want it here. <laughs> and we're going to let them know that next November. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance's path Seizing power, destroying our democracy, and taking away our freedoms runs right through the state of Wisconsin, and we are going to stop them. We have a choice between this November, between the choice has never been clearer. We have a choice between those who want more for themselves and someone who wants better for all of us. We have a choice between those who want to conquer by dividing and someone who wants to build by unifying. We have a choice between those who want to turn back 
to the past and someone that wants to go forward into the future. So, so here's what we're going to do, Wisconsin. We're going to work hard for a battle-tested leader who's not afraid of the truth. We're going to work hard over the next 100 days for a person who puts people first. We're going to deliver Wisconsin for a woman who has never forgotten where she came from or the state that helped raise her. And we are going to help elect the first woman as president of the United States of America. And her name is Kamala Harris. Whoa. Today, today is a brand new day, Wisconsin, and we've only got 105 days left. Let's make them count. Let's get to work, and let's win this damn thing. Let's go! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome United States Senator Tammy Baldwin. to be here today. And I want to start by thanking President Joe Biden for his incredible act of patriotism this weekend and for, and for a lifetime of remarkable service to our country. You know, today people are paying less for their prescription drugs our state is back to work fixing the damn roads, as our governor likes to say. <laughs> and millions of Wisconsinites with pre-existing conditions have affordable health care coverage because of the work of this president. And as we stand here today, we mark a new beginning for our party and for our country as we welcome our soon-to-be presidential nominee, Kamala Harris, back to our state. Now, as, as California Attorney General, Kamala Harris was the top prosecutor for the largest state in our nation, standing up for the rule of law and taking on perpetrators of all kinds which is the kind of experience that we may find come in handy these days. <laughs> As a United States Senator, it was riveting to watch Senator Harris hold the powerful to account. And as Vice President, she has fought fervently to restore reproductive freedoms that were lost when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. I. I am so proud to support Kamala Harris for President of the United States. Now, and you know what? There's a reason that she's kicking things off right here in Wisconsin. Because we are the battleground state. Wisconsin will likely decide who occupies the White House, and which party controls the United States Senate. No pressure. <laughs> and Wisconsin, for that US Senate seat, I am being challenged by a self-funding multimillionaire by the name of Eric Hovde. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about him. Eric Hovde owns a $3 billion California bank. He owns a $7 million Ocean View mansion in Laguna Beach. 
and he's actually been named one of Orange County's most influential residents three years in a row. <laughs> Folks, we have a green county. We have a brown county. We do not have an Orange County, Wisconsin. <laughs> You, you may laugh at that, but the stakes of this race are high. Eric Hovde celebrated when Roe was overturned. He said he's 100% anti-choice. Meanwhile, I am the one leading the effort to restore reproductive freedoms with my Women's Health Protection Act. <laughs> on on health care. On health care, my opponent wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act and kicks millions off their health insurance, living without health insurance throughout my childhood due to a childhood illness. That is why I got into this fight in the first place. I wrote the provision in the Affordable Care Act that allows young people to stay on their parents' health insurance until they turn 26. And I will never stop fighting until all Americans have the quality, affordable health care they deserve. And on the economy, Eric Hovde wants to cut Social Security and Medicare while giving, get this, while giving new tax breaks to the ultra-wealthy and well-connected just like himself. As your senator, I will always fight to bring down the costs for working families and make sure that multimillionaires like my opponent pay their fair share. So, so Wisconsin, in just 105 days, you will have a choice. A choice between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, a choice between me and my opponent, and the stakes of that choice could not be higher. So if you're with me in this fight, I ask you all to join my campaign at TammyBaldwin.com <laughs> or text Tammy to 24007. I am looking out over this crowd and I am so encouraged. I know that we will not only fight I know that we will win. Thank you.
Welcome, Leah Esser. to be introducing the next president of the United States of America. Vice President Kamala Harris. As an educator, I am so proud of the work that I do to serve our state and teach the next generation of leaders. But if it were not for the Biden-Harris Biden administration, I would still be obligated to student loan debt and unable to unconditionally serve the scholars I love. But thanks to the Biden-Harris administration's commitment to public service, I had almost all of my student loan debt forgiven. giving me the opportunity to serve the scholars I love without being burdened by debt. This policy has changed my life, as well as the teachers, counselors, social workers, psychologists, and many, many more with whom I serve our students in the state of Wisconsin. That is the kind of change we will be voting for when we elect Vice President Kamala Harris this November. <laughs> Vice President Harris has been standing up for ordinary Americans her entire career, from her service as a prosecutor to her time as district attorney, attorney general, United States Senator, and Vice President of the United States. She has always stood for the people. As Attorney General, Vice President Harris stood up for the students who had been taken advantage of by for-profit colleges. And Vice President Harris, uh, excuse me, and as Vice President, she fought for student debt relief. I know. I know that when we elect her president of the United States, she will be fighting for us. <laughs> and just yesterday, she won the support of the delegates needed to lead our party. <laughs> and now it is my distinct honor to introduce the first woman elected Vice President of the United States and the next President of the United States, Kamala Harris.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. It is good to be back. Thank you all very much. Can we please hear it for Leah and her extraordinary story and leadership? Thank you. And I do believe our teachers do God's work. They teach other people's children, and God knows we don't pay them enough. Let's thank her. And it is so good to be here and be back with so many extraordinary leaders, including my friend, the great governor of Wisconsin, Tony Evers. He's here somewhere. My dear friend, Senator Tammy Baldwin. And you know, I had the privilege of serving with Tammy when I was in the United States Senate, and she is always fighting for the people of this state, and I know that the folks that are here are going to make sure you return her to Washington, D.C. in November. Yes, we are going to elect her back to Washington, D.C. It is so good to be here also with Lieutenant Governor Sarah Rodriguez. Attorney General Josh Cole, Wisconsin Secretary of State Sarah Godlewski, County Executive David, David Crowley, Mayor Cavalier Johnson, and the great state party chair Ben Wickler. So I have worked with Ben, you and I have been working together for years, and I can attest he knows how to build the infrastructure that delivers wins up and down the ballot. Thank you, Ben. So it is good to be back in Wisconsin, and it is great to be in Milwaukee. As many of you know, our state campaign headquarters are in this city. Yes. And that, there is a reason for that. The path to the White House goes through Wisconsin. Yes, it does. And to win in Wisconsin, we are counting on you right here in Milwaukee. And you all helped us win in 2020. And in 2024, we will win again. Yes, we will. So Milwaukee, I want to start by saying a few words, and I could really speak at length, but a few words about our incredible President Joe Biden. It has truly been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve as vice president to our president, Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe's legacy of accomplishment over his entire career and over the past three and a half years is unmatched in modern history. In one term, think about it, in one term as president, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who served two terms in office. And I know we are all deeply, deeply grateful for his continuing service to our nation. And it is my great honor to have Joe Biden's endorsement in this race. So, Wisconsin, I am told as of this morning that we have earned the support of enough delegates to secure the Democratic nomination. And I am so very honored, and I pledge to you, I will spend the coming weeks continuing to unite our party so that we are ready to win in November. Yeah. 
So friends, we have 105 days until Election Day, and in that time, we've got some work to do. But we're not afraid of hard work. We like hard work, don't we? And we will win this election. Yes, we will. So as Leah told you, before I was elected vice president, before I was elected United States senator, I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. you, I will proudly put my record against his any day of the week. As Attorney General of California, I took on one of our country's largest for-profit colleges that was scamming students. Donald Trump ran a for-profit college that scammed students. As a prosecutor, I specialized in cases involving sexual abuse. Well, Trump was found liable for committing sexual abuse. As Attorney General of California, I took on the big Wall Street banks and held them accountable for fraud. Donald Trump was just found guilty of fraud on 34 counts. But let's also make no mistake, this campaign is not just about us versus Donald Trump. This campaign is about who we fight for. This is about who we fight for. Just look at how we are running our campaigns. So Donald Trump is relying on support from billionaires and big corporations. And he is trading access in exchange for campaign contributions. A couple months ago, you all saw that a couple months ago at Mar-a-Lago, he literally promised big oil companies, big oil lobbyists, he would do their bidding for $1 billion in campaign donations. On the other hand, we, are running a people-powered campaign. <laughs> and we just had some breaking news. We just had the best 24 hours. <laughs> of grassroots fundraising in presidential campaign history. All right. And because we are a people-powered campaign, that is how you know we will be a people-first presidency. And Wisconsin, this campaign is also about two different visions for our nation. One, where we are focused on the future. The other, focused on the past. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. Yeah. 
a future where no child has to grow up in poverty. Where every worker has the freedom to join a union. Where every person has affordable health care. future where every senior can retire with dignity. So all of this is to say building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. Because here's the thing we all here, Wisconsin, know. When our middle class is strong, America is strong. But Donald Trump wants to take our country backward. He and his extreme Project 2025 agenda will weaken the middle class. Like, we know we got to take this serious thing. Can you believe they put that thing in writing? <laughs> Read it. It's 900 pages. But here's the thing. You, when you read it, you will see Donald Trump intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. <laughs> he intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations and make working families foot the bill. They intend to end the Affordable Care Act and take us back then to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. Remember what that was like? Children with asthma, women who survived breast cancer, grandparents with diabetes. America has tried these failed economic policies before, but we are not going back. We are not going back. Not going back. We're not going back. We are not going back. We're not going back. Because ours is a fight for the future. And it is a fight for freedom. Generations of America's, generations, and we have to remember this, the shoulders on which we stand, generations of Americans before us led the fight for freedom. And now, Wisconsin, the baton is in our hands. We, who believe in the sacred freedom to vote, will make sure every American has the ability to cast their ballot and have it counted. We, who believe that every person in our nation should, who should have the freedom to live safe from the terror of gun violence, yeah. will finally pass red flag laws, universal background checks, and an assault weapons ban. Yeah. And we, who believe in reproductive freedom yeah. will stop Donald Trump's extreme abortion bans because we trust women to make decisions about their own body and not have their government tell them what to do. And when Congress passes a law to restore reproductive freedoms as President of the United States, I will sign it into law. So, 
Wisconsin, ultimately in this election, we each face a question. What kind of country do we want to live in? A country... And to your point, do we want to live in a country of freedom, compassion, and rule of law? Or a country of chaos, fear, and hate? And here's the beauty of this moment. We each have the power to answer that question. The power is with the people. We each have the power to answer that question. And in the next 105 days, then we have work to do. We have doors to knock on. We have phone calls to make. We have voters to register. And we have an election to win. So Wisconsin, today I ask you, are you ready to get to work? Do we believe in freedom? Do we believe in opportunity? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? And when we fight, we win.